day to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Cairo Moguls, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Health USA, The Goodman Factor, Chiropractic Rocks, Cairo Tax Pro, and Digital Hustle. Let's hustle. Hey guys, welcome to episode 211 of the Cairo Hustle podcast. I'm your co-host Luke Millette and here's your host Jim Chester. So today we had the opportunity of interviewing Dean Blackstock and if you want to know more about the Garden of England, stay tuned. So episode 211, Dean Blackstock coming in from Kent, UK and uh, you got Luke and Jim coming in from Grand Junction which is the Grand Valley on the west slope of Colorado. Um, We moved here three years ago to hear the birds chirp, and uh, today we get a chance to talk to you over in the English countryside. (laughs) The Garden of England. The Garden of England. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a real honor, real pleasure to be here. Thank you, guys. Well, you know, we love to do this type of work because it gets a chance to have you share your story, and it gets a chance to connect the dots with the global population of chiropractic. Yes. So many people don't really understand there's a movement globally for chiropractic and that's where our North Star is going here eventually. We're going to be releasing a series called uh, Cairo Hustle International. So we get a chance to uh, sweeten the deal with you today and just kind of get a little preview and yes. discuss um, what you're doing in this world and how you got into chiropractic and uh, I think this is going to be a, a really uh, amazing episode. So we're we're, we're thankful for having you. No, like I say, absolute pleasure. You guys are, are doing a great job for chiropractic and and the the the, the wider message. Do you know what I mean? So um, to be on here to speak with you guys for a little bit on this autumnal evening in in England, yeah, it's a real pleasure. Thank you so much. So October first, twenty twenty, Dean Blackstock. Happy birthday. Um, yeah, thank you, man. Thank you. It's uh, it's one of those things that comes once a year, and I'm thankful for it. And we always, uh, you know, should have some cake, right? <laughs> I should have, I should have prepared better. I should have like mailed some out to you or something. I don't know. Should have figured hey, something. Out. <laughs> I'll make sure I come in before before too long when they open the restrictions. I'll come visit you. Yeah, my door is open. I'll bring the cake. <laughs> Call the wife quick. Hey, Jim's coming. Get some cake. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so chiropractic, uh, I know you, you grew up in uh, a football, uh, you know, playing football, which is for all you Americans out there, we call it soccer. Um, you grew up playing football, got into personal training, and then uh, you decided chiropractic um, what got you inspired to become a chiropractor and maybe share with our audience your story? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, played a lot of sport growing up. My mum was a fitness trainer. So growing up for me, the natural kind of line that I thought I would take would be down that kind of road. Uh, and I'll be honest, James, I thought that I would probably go down the physio route because a lot of physios were working in and around soccer and stuff like that. So I thought, ah, maybe I'll go down that road. So I went into personal training, I was doing sports therapy as my diploma at college, and I just felt like it gave me a good level of knowledge, but there was there was more, it, like it, it, it opened my eyes to something, and it kind of gave me a little sneak peek, but not like the full picture, so I thought, after this college course, I'm going to have to do something different, but I don't quite think physio maybe is the route that I want to go down, I'd start to figure that out. So I spoke to my tutor at college, and she um, was a chiropractor, and up until that point, I'd never, ever, ever heard of chiropractic. Um, So I was like, okay, what's this all about? So I went to the library, I did some research and some reading. There was something about, it just made sense, like working with the nervous system, the way that, you know, we um, allow the body to do its job in terms of healing. There were so many things that just kind of made sense to me as I was reading through the perspectives. I just thought, you know what, chiropractic is is for me. So um, finished my diploma. And I went off to chiropractic school. And now 17 years almost in the making. And uh, tell, us, yep. tell us a little bit about the career and, and, and what you enjoy most about it. Oh, man. 17, oh, man it's, yeah, 17 years. It goes fast. It's been, it's been a journey. It's been an experience. And I think that what chiropractic is, is enabled me to do is meet lots of different people from all different walks of life and help them just to 
do the things in life that they want to do. Now, I've had the privilege of working with some elite athletes, some boxers, some Olympians. I've had the privilege of working with people that are in high profile jobs in the city, et cetera, et cetera. But I really enjoy working with people like myself just on the ground that just want to have a good quality of life to be able to play with their grandkids and play around the golf or just go on holiday or travel or just, you know, just, just live. Right. Um, and for me, that's probably over the, the, the period of time that I've been a chiropractor that I've most enjoyed just being a piece of people's journey whilst they're on a, like I say, a, a process of healing, right. To be able to just get them back on track, allow them to do the things that they need to do and then just go off and then just enjoy life. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been, you know, this year has been interesting, as we all know. I'm not going to say the C word, but, you know, it's it's still been an opportunity to learn and grow and meet people and, and um, you know, and use chiropractic to kind of reach people in lots of different ways. So, yeah, it's been it's been good. It's been a good good career so far. And hopefully there's plenty more left in the tank. That's great, man. It's always good to hear different perspectives. And uh, I do think that most chiropractors get into the profession because they want to help people. Mm. And uh, I think that that's really the the truth of it. And then as you start to go through the programming of the 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 degree, you yep. realize yep. that you can uh, save people's lives, mm. and that you can add uh, quality of years to them. And you know you can give people the opportunity to have uh, you know more motivation to live healthy. And Absolutely. I think that that's one of the most beautiful things about chiropractic: the lifestyle that surrounds it. Mm. And you know, sometimes it gets marketed as we can help you with your headaches, we can help you with your back pain, neck pain, but really it's a quality of life career. And Absolutely. it gives as much to the practitioner as it gives to the person that you're taking care of. So that's what I find to be really awesome about chiropractors and yeah, the work yeah. that they provide to their community. Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. It's the, the gateway for many people is obviously a symptom. Let's not be around the bush. You know, most people will pick up the phone and come and see me because you know, their neck's knackered or their back's hurting or whatever, and, and that's fine. But I think, you know, as a chiropractor, we have a duty to say, well, okay, you've come to us for this, but guess what? You're missing the bigger picture if you think it's just for this. There's more that we can do and there's more that you should be doing. So we've got a job to help to educate and empower them. And that's over the 16, 17 years now of being a chiropractor that I've enjoyed doing. Um, and I think as chiropractors, we are well-placed now when it comes to health because people are so self-aware now in this day and age about their health and their well-being i think chiropractic is in a fantastic position to help people just figure out okay there's more to chiropractic than just this thing you know this symptomatic thing that may draw you in you know so uh yeah exciting times ahead no doubt so what are some mantras that you live your life by and maybe what are some of your favorite motivational quotes oh ah uh, <laughs> I, I started keeping a journal of quotes about two or three years ago. Um, just like things that I'd come across uh, and I jot it down. There's a load of Jim Rohn stuff. I think the guy's an absolute G, so I love some of his stuff. Um, the motivational stuff is useful for me. I guess a mantra that I I kind of live my, my life by, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. That kind of well-known phrase. So I always try and look to be around people that that I can, um, I suppose, give my knowledge and my expertise and, and, and myself to, as well as obviously get something back. Because I just think life is richer when you're surrounding yourself with people that, that make you better. And then universally, you help to make them better. So that's one thing that I probably kind of use as a daily mantra. But man, this journal's full of stuff. So I just tend to pick and choose and open something up and think, yeah, that, that feels good today or actually that one suits good to stay and I'll, I'll go with that one. So yeah, <laughs> that's my main one. Yeah. It's important to have a variety of life. And I think that, you know, you said it spot on is when you have multiple influences of motivation, it's, uh, it's important. And, uh, you know, you being a footballer and me also, one of my favorite mantras is you're only as good as your last game. Yeah. <laughs> and when I hear what you said, you know, you pulled yourself out of retirement recently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is why I'm I'm sitting on a nice soft cushion. The hips are the hips, the knees. The knees are not what they used to be. So uh <laughs> I'll have to dip into that motivational book again and start pulling out some ones. But <laughs> it's amazing. I think social media now uh and the internet is is full of 
you know, there's, there, I mean, there's, there's motivational phrases and stuff that you just, you can pull out the bag every two seconds, right? I, I think it's important to, to, to not get too entrenched in one thing, which is probably why I keep this journal full of different ones, because life is, life is ever changing. So, you know, a lot of people may say, right, this is my thing, right? Um, seize the day or do this or blah, blah, blah. And I think, okay, that's fine. If that floats your boat, crack on. Um, for me, I think just having that variety enables you to be more chameleonic because that's what life is about. Life is, is ever adapting, it's ever changing. So, you know, there'll be some stuff that will motivate you, which is to do with how you feel. It might be to do with, it might be to do with finances. It might be to do with the environment and nature. It might be to do with family or relationships. Uh, so, yeah, I, I tend to yeah, pick and choose depending on, on where I'm at in life and what, what kind of flows my way. So how do you think the world would change if every person started getting adjusted regularly? Over the years, being a chiropractor, one thing that has uh, always, I guess not even surprised me, but it always it always brings a smile to my, my face and to my soul is when you're working with somebody and they come in, okay, initially because their back's hurting or whatever, when they start to go through their chiropractic care and they notice some of the other things like I'm sleeping better, my digestion's good, I feel like I've got more energy, right? All of those things enable you to change your perspective on health. And I think, okay, chiropractic is, is a wonderful tool to enable people to live a better quality of life. And I think that if everyone were getting adjusted, it would just give them a different perspective on their health because chiropractic is a fantastic piece of the cog but that bigger machine of, of health involves so many different things. And I think when people start to look at how they move and how they feel, then they start to think about, well, you know, am I, am I doing the other things that are going to affect my health? Am I sleeping well? Have I got good nutrition? Um, you know, are my relationships good? Is my stress levels, you know, am I, am I managing those? We get so entrenched sometimes in just getting stuff done. We never really take our head up until the shit hits the fan. Do you know what I mean? So I think chiropractic is is a wonderful tool because it just helps to just get people to, to just raise their head and take a step back and evaluate health as a whole. And I think when you start to move and feel better, then you start to look at other facets of health. And um, yeah, I think the world will be a happier place because, right, I think if you're evaluating all these other facets, hey, you know, you, you look at your world differently, you look at your relationships differently, you look at your family differently, and that can only be a good thing. So where do you see chiropractic going in the next 20 years or so? Um, oh, man. Up until this year, I could have probably given you a better answer. I've got no ideas. <laughs> I think... Where this, do you want this, it to go? Where do I want it to go? I think, like I say, this year, in terms of what's happening around us now with this pandemic, is telling us very clearly that as human beings, we are part of planet Earth and we are part of this environment so are we treating it well or are we treating ourselves well where i'd like to see chiropractic in 20 years very much is at the forefront of helping people evaluate how they are looking after themselves looking after their immediate environment but also then if everyone's doing that that's going to have a massive influence on the environment as a whole and our world as a whole so i think that we are well placed because we we take a very um we take a very interesting and balanced view when it comes to working with the body, working with the nervous system, allowing it to heal, allowing that innate intelligence to flow, etc. Um, and I think if we can start to get that message across as people start to become more aware about health, because not everybody wants to be, you know, jabbed up to the hilt with vaccines because you think, okay, fine, it's COVID this year. What about in five years? Do you think this is going to be the end? Do you think this will be the end of everything? There's probably going to be something else. So I think a lot of people are looking at, well, how do I... How can I protect myself and be in the best possible uh, health? Um, and I think if we can position ourselves as chiropractors, then we're well placed to help people to kind of do that. So, and I think your answer is very fair because it is a very confused uh, um, world right now on what to do. And it made me think while you're speaking: is chiropractors should come up with a health grade system for people, like. We're going to evaluate mental, mm -hmm. physical, chemical, and we're going to give you a score. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to improve. Mm -hmm. You need a yearly pass test. <laughs> 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 I 
gonna, we're going to evaluate you. Yeah. And we're going to work with the team of um, specialists, not only the chiropractors, but yes. we're going to work with people that are in the health arena to make you get better scores. Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. That's, that's a brilliant way to have people be more empowered mm-hmm. and to not say it's us against them. Yes. Not to say we need an outside in source, but we're teaching people self-responsibility, health accountability, mm-hmm. and then chiropractic won't be something as uh, such a, you know, a pain-based profession, but it will be a, these are the people that are giving me a better quality of life profession. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And just like training, you get a chance to see um, human performance. Yeah. And when we have human performance from the mom and pop and the office worker and the Mm -hmm. average Joe, now they're going to say, wow, my health scores are improving. Absolutely. And it's, it's not a deficiency of a chemical in my body. It's a deficiency of fitness in my body. Mm-hmm. It's a deficiency of positive thinking in my body. It's a deficiency of my blood needs to be improved in my body. Yeah. So yeah. when we start looking at the blueprint of, you know, all the, the stressors, like you mentioned earlier, now we can have solutions. Yeah. And I think one of the hardest things for people to actually come to terms with is that, um, they just don't know who to give the proper solution to them is because they don't have the power inside of them to come up with it themselves. Yeah. So we yeah. need a professional grade solution provider, which is chiropractic, but we just need to figure out how to make that um, accessible for all people. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, if that were the case, well, there's not enough chiropractors to provide those services. <sighs> Tell me about it. Yeah. Tell me about it. Um and I think that the the world that we're living in is, is certainly becoming more metric based, and I, I I feel that that's probably a shift that that if we want to keep up as a profession, we're going to have to start including that in how we evaluate, like you say, um, people's health because it's a case of right, this is where you are now, this is where you'd like to be now. How do we get there? Yes, we can use chiropractic, but you may have to pull in a few other things along the way to maximise it. So when we get you to this endpoint, you are living. Um, I hate using the word optimally because it's a buzzword, BS word, but that's the only one I can think of right now. But do you know what I mean? It's, it's a case of taking people through a journey and a process to get them to a point where they're able then to be in a much better state to, to deal with life stresses. But if you don't know necessarily where those triggers are coming from and you're just working on one thing, it, it becomes a bit more of a challenge. And I think you get you can you can get left behind. So you know, 20 years from now, chiropractic has been around 150 years. Listen, you know, it's not going to go anywhere soon, but I think the world we're living in now, um, yeah, like you say, it's going to be interesting to see the shift in chiropractic in terms of how we assess and evaluate and then take people on a process of adjusting and then how we then assess and evaluate after that to give them a metric of this is what you're like and this is what you're like now, right? And then people go, shit, that makes total sense. I need to go off and I need to tell my next door neighbor and my my friends and right you need to get some of this as well so yeah we shall see we shall see well you know the conversation goes further because you know coming back to the idea of being on a team and being on the sport like yeah. everybody's on a team like we're on the human team mm-hmm. and 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 people would not be on the starting lineup like if you look <laughs> at like like the average person you couldn't put them in the game yeah, yeah, they're on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> so if we want everybody to be like in the game of life, yeah. then we need to get them up to like standard. Yeah. And, and if we're ever going to win this game of life, then we need team members that we can rely on. Yeah. And I think that that's what's happened is we, we take the norm as people that are disabled and not capable. And if we made people more abled and yeah. more yeah. capable – now we're changing the whole game and now we have a winning team right. and then we're less dependent on, you know, people having a big answer for us because now we have the answer because everybody's up to a higher standard of quality of living. And I think that's what we need to go back to is like, how can we help our brother and sister and neighbor and get them up to a higher standard of living rather than judging them for not being where we're at. And that's when we get the paradigm shift. Yeah. hundred percent. We need people in the game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> be a big we, do need, we need people on the game off the bench. And it's interesting. I love this analogy because you have people in different positions. Not, every, not everyone can be a striker. 
Not everyone can be in the midfield. Some people need to play in goal. Some people need to be on the bench. Some people need to, you know, uh, be on the wing or whatever. So I think you, you find your position, you make it your own and you run with it, you know, um, to, to have a, a, a one size fits all like, right, we're going to have 11 players on the team and everyone's going to play up front. It, it just wouldn't work, right? The, the team would collapse. So you're right. It's about balance. It's about making sure that you are, you're looking at the metrics, you're looking at evaluating, you're looking at obviously how you're adjusting them. And you're making it work for that individual. And if it's working for them and they are feeling and functioning better and you can then objectively and subjectively look at that, then, yeah, chiropractic is it's, it's a winner, right? It's an absolute winner. Yeah, we need to create the human team. <laughs> if it's being created, I'll play up front. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> we, have seven, we have 7 billion possible team members, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so so let's let's change this conversation a little bit to uh maybe some of the people that have influenced you maybe some of the heroes that you've had while you know becoming the man that you are today and if you could sit down and have uh, a cup of tea or a coffee or a meal with one person who would that be uh anyone that's been on the international space station or Neil Armstrong. Yeah, I think I was, I, this is such a wicked question because I've been obviously listening to Kyra Hustle and you you hear about like um, like some other people's response, you think, damn, actually, yeah, that would be a good person to sit down. I never thought about that. Um, and I think for me, space has always fascinated me. And I, I, and I think it's because here on planet Earth, you can get stuck in your own little bubble. And I think the bigger picture is like you say, there's 7 billion of us on this planet. It's a big world and there's lots of us doing lots of different things. And I think sometimes you, you can get entrenched and stuck in, in our own little sphere. So I'd love to sit down and have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, uh, probably coffee because I'm a coffee man, with somebody that's been on the space station where you are out in the annals of space. Because it, it, must, it must cause a perspective shift when you come back to Earth in the sense of what am I doing and why am I doing it, do you know? And I think that as chiropractors, like you say, yeah, we want to help people, but why? Why do you want to help people? I could just help myself. Why, am, why do I feel like I'm, I've been pulled into the profession where I want to you know, help people just have a quality of life? Why should it bother me? I don't know why, but it does. And I think maybe if I was 16,000 you know, um, feet above Earth or however far the space station is, maybe it would give you a different perspective on uh, maybe this is why, because you know, we're surrounded by all this beauty and stuff. So... Yeah, if you can arrange that, that would be an amazing Christmas present. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you have three months. You have three months. <laughs> or maybe some of your sports heroes or chiropractic heroes too. Uh, sports heroes, because of my soccer background, I guess, um, like growing up, um, my dad was a big football fan. So like Pele and Maradona and stuff as, a, as an Arsenal fan. Um, obviously, there's lots of players that have played for, for Arsenal that I'm, I'm massive, massive um, fans of. Chiropractic's an interesting one because um, I guess when I was doing my training at, at Matimini, um, they were really strong on philosophy. So we spoke a lot about the philosophy, but not really much about the founding fathers in terms of like people that have gone before us, apart from the big hitters. Um, so it's really been, since I've graduated, I've taken it upon myself to kind of see who's been out there in terms of who's been influenced in the profession. So, you know, there's loads of people that have gone before us, I think chiropractically that have, have put a marker down. And I think there's, there's obviously people now that are doing exactly the same thing, I guess with social media, with, um, you know, the, the birth and the, the growth of the internet, there's lots of people that I admire because they're, they're putting chiropractic out there. And I know that some people do get a bit of, a hard deal about how they're promoting or showing chiropractic to be. But I think it's almost like that old saying, like, uh, what has it go? A, um, oh, shoot. I can't remember the saying. But they're talking, they're talking about chiropractic. You, you get where I'm coming from. And I think that opens a conversation. Whether they like the way it's done or not opens a conversation about chiropractic. Now, with that, you can have a discussion and debate. So, you know, I love the stuff that Brett Jones is doing. I think he's, a, he's doing some really good stuff. Um, there's obviously like the Houston chiropractor, there's Dr. Jason, there's, um, there's a few other people as well. Um, I can't really name off the top of my head, but there's lots of people that are putting chiropractic out there 
and exposing it to people that may not have ever seen it. Now, they may not necessarily have thought about going to see a chiropractor up until they saw that video on YouTube or they scrolled through that carousel on Instagram. And I think that um, for me, those guys are, they're, they're inadvertently doing a good job. Sometimes they may have their own reasons for doing it. I don't know. But I think for me, yeah, some of the, the guys coming along now are doing a good job. So if I can be part of that journey, then I'd love to be. That's what that's what my aim is. You made it to Cairo Hustle. Sit back and learn from the greatest influencers in the profession. This week's episode is brought to you by Imaging Services, Cairo Moguls, Mahalo Wellness, Cairo Health USA, The Goodman Factor, Chiropractic Rocks, Cairo Tax Pro, and Digital Hustle. Let's hustle. Well, I think the ecosystem brought us together as well, and social media did bring us as a, a tighter unit. And yes. I was able to see some of the inspiring videos that you were doing oh, and it brought you. us together as a community, you know? And it, it said, hey, this guy is obviously looking to make an impact and he's looking to inspire people daily. And I was like, I want his story. So yeah, I mean, social media is an ecosystem that we live in and chiropractic is a larger parent company yes. of each one of these clinics that goes out there and changes lives. Yeah. And you know, like my shirt says, expect miracles. Like when you do the adjustment, like it's without a doubt that the miracle happens. Like it's just you being such a skilled professional that when you do, uh, you know, you deliver the goods that, you know, whether it's Brett Jones or whether it's Billy DeMoss yeah. or whether it's Dean Blackstock, when you adjust somebody, you're giving somebody the chance to have a better quality of life. Absolutely. And you've taken your education, your science, your philosophy, and your art, and now you're giving people the best that you can possibly do. And most people, the reason that they don't take action is they don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. They don't know who to trust. They don't have a connection. They have symptoms, but they're mm -hmm. like, they're on the pill mill. Yeah. They're, 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 they have the white coat like authority. And they're like, well, I don't know who to like really talk to about my baby that has colic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe the baby needs medicine. And they're not, they don't realize that if they just took the baby to the chiropractor, that the baby would sleep through the night, they would sleep through the night and all quality of life would improve. And I know that's what you said in the beginning of our interview is that when you start adjusting people, one of the things that they don't really understand is like, wow, I sleep better. And, you know, when you devote eight hours of your 24 hours of a day to something, like, yes. let's make it good. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you could tell us a little bit about some marketing that you've tried in the past that failed miserably and maybe what you learned from some of your marketing adventures. <laughs> When I first graduated, I worked for a couple in London and they were lovely. I was like, right, it's time for you to go out and, you know, put yourself in the public eye and let people know you're here. Sounds like a wicked idea. So I went down to the local supermarket with my banner and my leaflets and I stood there for probably about four days, just speaking to people and handing out and trying to, but people are there to shop, right? So I've done loads of different things over the 16, 17 years. Some of them have not worked, shall we say. Um, but I, do you know what? I'm going to say that they did work in a way because not everyone's ready to necessarily go to a chiropractor when I'm right there saying this is what I do. That may sound awesome to them, but do you know what, Dean? Right now, I've got a family to feed. I'd love to come and speak to you, but not right now, or whatever it might be. Um, so sometimes we, we do things expecting I'm going to do this and I want the result to be now. Do you know what I mean? And it's not always like that, particularly when it comes to health. Most people by default won't do anything until something's knackered. I will go to a dentist because I want to keep my teeth healthy, but there's a lot of people that will only go to a dentist when their teeth are hurting them. That's just the way it is. Same with getting your eyes checked, same with your general health. So, you know, there's lots of marketing things that I've tried that may have not necessarily given me the immediate result that I was expecting. Like, you do this, you put it into a funnel, and then you expect this to come out the other end. But sometimes in marketing, it's like, I'm going to put it into the funnel, and it might not come out for three months. 
or it might not even come out for a year. It, it might be this weird thing where somebody speaks to someone because they saw someone and then they speak to someone else and then I get a referral. And that was from something that I did standing outside of the supermarket or doing an internet promotion or doing a talk or whatever it might have been. So I don't know. I take a very, now that I've been doing it a long time, I can say this, I take a very pragmatic view. I've got an idea of what I would like out of it. And if it happens, great. If it doesn't happen, it may well have still worked, but I just need to be patient with it. So at the start, when I was graduating, of course, you do something and I want a result. If I'm going to go and do a talk, I want everyone here to sign up. Otherwise, it's been a waste of my time. Um, now I'm like, I will go and talk to 100 people. And if 100 people come and see me, awesome. If one person comes and sees me, even better, right? Because I've still touched somebody. And that person will probably change somebody else, touch somebody else and so on and so forth. So, yeah, that's the way that I look at it now. Um, but, yeah, there's been some horrors. I mean, there's been times where I've just thought, I don't I, I just, why? <laughs> why? But with experience, with time, you start to you start to realize the bigger picture. It's not always about the immediate result, particularly when it comes to marketing. So sometimes you plant the seed, you go off, you come back in the spring and the summer when it's ready to obviously harvest, and then you harvest. But you can't plant the seed and then stand over the ground and then expect it to suddenly start cropping up straight away. You have to be patient. You've got to give it the right environment. You've got to give it the right you know um, the right. Uh, tools for it to work and if it does great if it doesn't fine learn and then try something different i think it's a brilliant answer because marketing is an incubator mm. and you know the things that we do now uh, we plant seeds yeah. and i grew up in iowa and uh, that's a uh, farmland yeah and when you plant seeds you can't harvest the field until the the the, the corn grows yeah. You just can't rush it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the cycle of the seasons are there for purpose. Mm -hmm. So marketing, we all want instant gratification because we're like, I'm putting my money into this. I'm putting my time into this. I'm staffing it. I'm figuring out how to make, like you said, the leaflets that you hand out or the talk that you present. And you're like, damn it. If I go do this, I want people to show up. And that's <laughs> like, it's like the young man sport. You know, like I'm out there beating doors down. I want people to come into the clinic. But yeah. when you build the practice, um, you're you're not as uh, you don't need it to to be like come one come all. It's mm -hmm. if I just keep keep the message consistent, yep. then people will eventually understand that what I do is very unique. I'm very honest, and I want to help people, and they're going to eventually share that story. And it might take them two years. It might take them six months, but eventually they'll come. And that's the, the brilliant thing about being patient and uh, moving slow allows you to speed up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Pulling on grass will not make it grow quicker. That's another one that was in my journal. It's the same thing. Sometimes you just have to let it be, you know, so um, have, like you say, the, have the intention um, and then plant the seed and, and let it work its magic. Right. So what's some advice that you would give to a chiropractic student? Um, huh. <laughs> what's the, some advice I'd give a chiropractic student? Like who's graduated or, or? If someone's in school and they're struggling and they don't know if uh, they're going to make it or if they're stressed out, what's some encouragement you would give them to keep going? Oh, you know, I'm a firm believer in that if you really have given it your all, and you can take a stand back and you can say, I couldn't have done any more, I tried any harder. Then all right, fine, maybe, maybe just find a different avenue. I love this profession. I worked hard at it because I wanted, I wanted to become a chiropractor. Once I'd found it, I was like, this is what I'm gonna do. Come hell or hard water, whether I have to reset exams, reset years, whatever it takes, this is what I'm gonna do. I had friends that were with me on that journey who kind of, when the going got a little bit sticky and a little bit tough, were like, do you know what? This, yeah, it's not really for me. Now, if it's not, fine. Do you know what? Go off and find something different. This profession needs people that are passionate about chiropractic and they're passionate about helping individuals live, you know, the quality of life that they deserve. So I think if it's, if it's something which you are 
hell bent on achieving come hell or high water, then my advice to you is to stick with it, is to make sure that you give yourself the opportunity to, uh, to grow and to learn, surround yourself with people that will help push you. And if you're struggling, reach out. You know, there are plenty of people that have been through their chiropractic training. We've all struggled, you know. Some people breeze through, but they're rare. Most people will find things that will challenge them, things that will that will, will challenge their beliefs or their values or their clinical skills or whatever it might be. Speak to, speak to your teachers, speak to your friends, speak to other chiropractors, reach out. You know, I have chiropractors reach out to me and I'm, my door is always open, virtually or in real life. So if you've got any problems, I always say, listen, just reach out and I'll be able to give you my opinion if you're struggling with something. But to try and bottle it all up and deal with it yourself, you'll either, you'll get there and you'll burn out and then you won't, you won't love what you're doing anymore and you'll go off and do something different or you just give up. And I think that's that's the, the, the shame, I think, with some people where they just give up. And it's like, man, if you just reached out and spoken to someone, had a conversation, you could, you could have figured this out. Not that it's going to be easy. It won't be easy, but you could have figured this out. So don't chuck the towel in. If it's something you really believe and want to do, work hard, reach out, ask for help. If it's something which you're like, do you know what? I've tried and I've tried. And I just, I think I'm done. All right, fine. Listen, don't, don't kill yourself over trying to graduate. You can find, you can still influence and you can still help people and you can still educate people through other means, whether that be still in the chiropractic field, but just doing a different job or just doing something different. So I think that would be my advice. Do you think students should pick their schools based on where they live? Uh, they might not have any choice now, um, you know, based on the current situation. I didn't. I just, uh, I just, I, I looked when I did my research at the universities and places that were available and I wanted to start as quick as I could. So that was my driving factor. I think university, chiropractic college, uh, whatever you want to kind of term it, it's a great learning experience. University is a great learning experience because you get to meet people from different walks of life. So if that, if that is something which you also want to have as part of your experience, then fine, maybe look at the geography. But, you know, I think we're blessed. There's lots of chiropractic schools in this country. Well, there's five main ones, if I remember rightly, maybe six now. Um, there's obviously tons in the States and, and um, other parts of, you know, Americas and Australia. So if, if it's something which you want to do, yeah, by all means, crack on and go with the geographical thing. But to me, it doesn't make too much difference. I wouldn't necessarily say go here because this is better than this one. I think if 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 their if their ethos is to try and produce chiropractors to go off into the world and help people, then regardless as to where you go, you, you should be okay. Yeah, geographics is definitely something that's interesting to me. Um, what I've come to realize is that chiropractors that are like in the profession, um, they always kind of hedge towards, I want to send students to, to a college that's philosophically sound and that can produce real adjusters. Because I, I found that as I've been in the profession for over a decade now, that the worst thing in the world is a chiropractor that can't adjust. And uh, when you find somebody that doesn't have the toolkit to be able to serve their community, that's really um, all I ask for is when a chiropractor decides on becoming a chiropractor that they can come out and deliver the goods. And my, based on what you were saying, it makes me come back to the idea if somebody is struggling in school, um, usually they probably just need a good mentor and they need to go get adjusted, number one. <laughs> And they need to like repurpose themselves as to why they're on this journey. Yeah. And, and, you know, you said that pretty clearly, but I really believe that if they were to go get adjusted and build a relationship, this is a larger ecosystem, like I said earlier, of chiropractic and chiropractic's the parent company. And if there's somebody that's in the ranks that needs some type of assistance, there's plenty of outreach. And I think that if people are just wise enough to know that mentorship, friendship, relationship is better than any money that they'll ever make in this profession, that that's what they should really lean on. And they should build their, their network because, like you said, some of the people I went through the university with you, um, they're doing what they're supposed to do. And if they're out there checking and adjusting, that's what they were supposed to do. And that's just the, the path of life. Like, 
That's a, it's a great career when people get it and they can deliver it. But if you don't get it, you can't deliver it. Then there's plenty of other options out there. But I, I do like that you're fair with your, your analysis to say, you know, um, talk to the teacher, talk to, you know, your, your classmates and figure out what it is that you can do to make it a better world for yourself. And I think that's really what it is. It's a headspace game. And if we can get through the headspace game, then we can produce great chiropractors. 100%. And I think this is one of the interesting things because it's it's got everything to do with chiropractic and it's got nothing to do with chiropractic because I know some phenomenal adjusters, but they're not be not because of the technique, not because of what they do, but it's their belief in themselves. And I think that this is where, again, you know, regardless to where you're going as you know, as uh, as a student, it's not about the establishment, it's not about who's teaching you, it's about your confidence in chiropractic in what you're doing, and it's about your confidence in yourself. And I think if the two are aligning, then you'll be a great chiropractor or a great osteopath or a great physio or a great physical therapist or a great massage therapist or whatever. I know, like I say, some fantastic uh, universities and establishments that produce some phenomenal adjusters, but they can't communicate or engage with people. And you think, well, hold on a minute. This is half the frigging battle. Like, if you can't get your message across, you can be the best adjuster in the world, but it's not going to make a blind bit of difference. Now, you could be an excellent communicator, but if you don't have confidence in your belief and uh, confidence in your ability to adjust that individual at that time and enable that adjustment to make an impact on their health, again, it falls down. So I think it's, it's, it's a blend of the two, making sure that they match up. And I think where some people struggle is that they feel like, oh, maybe it's a technique thing. Maybe it's because of it's, uh, I need more philosophy. I need more, more of the science. I need more blah, blah, blah. It's like you probably need even less. You need to work on this. Like you say, it's about the headspace. Get this sorted. You probably find all the other pieces will fall into into place. Um, so yeah, that's that's a great point. So, what are some things that you like to read and listen to? And maybe what are some of your hobbies? What do you do when you're not in the clinic adjusting? Oh, hobbies. Exercise for me is a big one. So, uh, if it's not exercise. Uh, Whiskey. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't gonna lie. You can't wrap it up any other way. Sorry, Lee, you asked me the question. Uh, yeah, I do like my whiskey. Um, what else? Uh, <laughs> I guess for me, like, experiences are always a big thing for me. So I don't mind what I'm doing and where I'm doing it. I like getting out into nature. Like I say, I'm in Kent, which technically is the Garden of England. We've got loads of... Um, outdoor spaces and stuff to explore i'm on the coast so i can get to the coast quite quickly um so anything like that where i'm i'm active and doing stuff um with people that i love so my family are a massive part of my world so i love my family to bits and for me like i say, i'm pretty happy as long as i can exercise and kind of there's a whiskey in the cupboard like a single malt then i'm a happy man right that's that's you know big tick um and when it comes to books and stuff i i like to I like to keep it balanced. I think that one of the things that has really helped me certainly as a chiropractor is the ability to connect with individuals very quickly. Now, I don't necessarily read papers for reading papers sake or read a certain book for reading a book sake, but it's an engagement. You know, if somebody says, oh, you know, I'm reading a book and oh, what are you reading? And they say, oh, I'm reading whatever it might be. Girl on the train. Oh, awesome. I like, do you like this part when it was blah, 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 blah. Oh, you've read it as well. That's a connection because, oh my God, I didn't know my chiropractor would read a book like that or whatnot. I thought it was just about chiropractic. You'd just be reading textbooks, you know, every day. And so I read a wide berth of different things. I like fiction and novels and history. And I try to listen to a little bit of everything, but personal development for, um, personal development for me is probably like the, the main cornerstone. And then I'll just pull in some stuff around that. So um, I get to drive every day to and from the office about 45 minutes, so I'd go through quite a lot of audiobooks. Um, but I'll listen to anything. I'm pretty flexible. And of course, checking you guys out on the podcast. Where can people go if they want to check out more about you and what you're up to? Uh, the I'm most probably active and vociferous on Instagram and Facebook. So um, that's probably the best place to go and go and catch me. So um, Dapper Cairo on Instagram. And on Facebook, you can kind of go and check me out there. Cool. Well, we, we want to thank you for being our guest today. 
And uh, it, was, uh, it was really nice to connect with you. And your message is straight from the heart. And uh, I see you doing the work. And um, I just look forward to having more opportunities to stay connected with you and to share this, share this chiropractic narrative with you further. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so much for having me on. You guys are doing a great job, like I say, um, bringing chiropractors together and bringing our message out to the public. So for that, I want to thank you for having me on because you've had some, some people that I admire in the profession and you've had some people that you've brought in from outside the profession, which I think is also really important to hear, you know, health and well-being from a different perspective. Um, so for that and, you know, being able to come and speak to you guys, it's, it's a real, real pleasure. So thank you for having me on. It's, uh, it's been wicked. Yeah, this was a fun episode. Uh, thank you for being our guest. And we want yeah. you to enjoy the rest of your evening over in uh, the Garden of England. Is that what it's yeah. called? <laughs> Sounds awesome. I want to see it. Listen, man, as soon as this travel ban's over, they, they, they come and visit. Come visit. I'm I've there. Got, I've got cake and I've got a single malt. There's the one more. I'll have the cake and I'll have the single malt. <laughs> nice one. Cool. All right. Talk to you soon. See you. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Right. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Stay safe. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Cairo Hustle. Don't forget to subscribe and check back next week to continue hustling.